Okay, so imagine that you were never born. Do you imagine that it would be some kind of like a black void, some kind of eternal, persistent, non-stop lack of experience? Um, okay, well, imagine this black that you see on the screen in the borders of your screen just imagine that that's the entire universe. The the black that you're seeing here is, let's just say for the purpose of this thought experiment, is uh, the darkness of the universe, space, you know. And for the purposes of this thought experiment, I'm just going to say that this is a brain. I know that brains aren't actually uh, pink like this. And so imagine that that's you, um, that's your brain that's doing consciousness. And uh, so that's, we're, we're just using the brain because it's, we're just condensing this down just because I want you to uh, see why I, I need to simplify this. It needs to be in a uh, simplistic manner. So, there's just you in the universe. That's it. That's the only consciousness there is. So that there is, there is no one else that is uh, being deprived of this one and only experience. So it doesn't matter if, um, if, if this brain were to split into two, it wouldn't really matter because there was experience occurring before the other brain came to exist. It wasn't like that brain, that other consciousness was being deprived of this one and only experience. No, because this was the only experience that was occurring. There was no surrounding uh, spots of deprivation or lack of experience that was occurring because there was experience before the other brain came to exist. It was just being done by this one and only brain. So let's say that no one exists. You don't exist. Nobody exists. The, there is no consciousness anywhere in the universe at all. But then, a single brain comes to exist. This time, it's not you. Uh, you're not in a black void. You're not anywhere. You don't exist on any level. So, therefore, you can't be in some kind of state of deprivation or... Um, you know, kind of having a, a lack of experience, a, a persistent lack of experience. That This is the only experience there is. And so there's no way for you to um, impede this experience from being the only experience. So it's, it's not you, but it's almost as if you were born anyways. Because a brain is doing consciousness. This is the only experience there is. Period. So there is no... Um, there is no... Anything impeding this experience from being experienced. There is no... Uh, you in a black void or anything like that. People have this... We, a lot of people believe in this uh, illusion of us being in like this eternal slumber or silent black void long before we came to exist. But that's not true because we didn't exist, but other uh, brains were doing consciousness before we existed. Therefore, there was experience before. 
uh, the brain that, that, that started doing the consciousness that's uh, watching this video right now came to exist. There, there was experience before that, but uh, this particular brain that is you doesn't recall that experience because, well, just like you don't have access to my memories and I don't have access to yours and you don't have access to anyone else's memories, you know, we're, because uh, those memories are contained in those uh, material um, uh, objects and we, we refer to as brains. So there would be no way for you to have uh, to remember the experiences that were occurring at that point in time before your birth. But there was, we know for a fact that people existed before, I know for a fact that people existed before I was born, and therefore there was experience before I existed. And after I die there will be experience uh, after I cease to exist. And I won't exist on any level to impede or to block or to uh, stop experience from coming after my death. So if you didn't exist in this scenario, in the second scenario, where the brain isn't uh, whoever's watching this video, but it's, you know, it's the only experience there is, period, in the entire universe or multiverse or anywhere, then if that's the only experience, then it's no different than as if this brain were you, honestly. Because uh, everyone refers to themselves as I, and every, if I talk to a group of people, I can point to each one of them and say, how are you? How are you? And call everybody you. Because we all sh have that thing in common. Each brain uh, is doing an individual experience. And a lot of people refer to it as, as the self or, um, you know, the, the experience of being an individual organism in the universe. Um, so if you were never born, it doesn't really make any difference because there would still be experience. And as David Benatar says, is that uh, no life is really uh, worth bringing to exist, causing to exist. Because he says that, uh, you know, all lives suffer, which is true. Um, but because of that, he says that all procreation at least with humans, should stop. But um, if this wasn't a human brain, then imagine that it was some other creature's brain, an alien's brain or an animal's brain or something like that, and it was the only experience there is, you know? So he kind of has to extend his idea, his antinatalism to uh, all organisms. Otherwise, because what, what I'm explaining to you is called generic subjective continuity. And it would still occur, this, what I'm explaining to you, would still happen uh, even if all humans were gone, you know. So yeah, if you, if you never existed, let's say that's you, and then you go away, you no longer exist, but then somebody else is born, well, then that's the experience that came after your, your death, you know? Or if you were never born, and then somebody else is born, then that's the experience that is occurring rather than the one caused by the other brain that wasn't born. It doesn't matter. Their experience is unavoidable. Only experience is what is experienced. As Tom Clark, uh, the philosopher, says, consciousness is always present for itself. That's the same as saying only experience is what's experienced. You can't have a uh, non-experience. You can't 
yeah, un experience is unavoidable. It's the only thing that's experienced. Um, and any time that there is no experience, and we know, we all know this from our own experience of life, is any time that there is no experience or there we're completely unconscious, it's always skipped over from our point of view. You know, if you go to sleep or you go completely unconscious at two o'clock and then you wake back up at five o'clock, well, those three hours in between, you didn't go into a black void where you sat there for three hours, you know, just like waiting. It was instantaneously skipped over from your point of view, like almost like a time machine type of deal. Um, so if every living thing in the universe died, but then one day once again, a, a consciousness somehow comes to exist, abiogenesis, or however you say it, uh, whatever might start life again, consciousness, then it'll be, you know, it, it'll, that's the experience. It won't, there will be no uh, respite, as uh, Tom Clark puts it. So in this way, David Benatar's antinatalism is futile. It's, it's completely pointless. Uh, it's just, I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, it's completely futile. Um, experience is unavoidable. The, the best we can do is try to make uh, Earth and the universe the, the best place to be. Uh, because this is it. You know, this is it. There is no black voids. There is no uh, rest in peace before life or after life. You know, there's just uh, life after life after life after life after life. And for better or worse, you know, uh, yes, each one will suffer. And there's that. So, yeah, it's just going to be, you know, life after life after life after life, after life, forever and ever, because only experience is what is experienced. Thanks for watching.